Good day ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host bringing you another video on a discovery of a gigantic troodontid which was certainly unique in more ways than one. Last month, a new journal article titled Deinonychosaur Trackways in Southern Eastern China Record a Possible Giant Troodontid made some waves in the paleontological community. This study is unique for a couple of reasons. First, it's based on a dinosaur trackway, meaning we don't have actual fossils of the creature itself, rather just the footprints left behind. Secondly, it discusses the troodontid family, a group that we haven't heard too much about lately. The last major discussion I personally heard about this group was when the classification and validity of Troodon was put into question. Quickly though, I would appreciate if you all could like this video and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a bunch and it makes sure that I don't end up extinct like the dinosaur that we're looking at today. Anyways though, let's get into the background information of this discovery. Deinonychosaurs closely related to birds originated in the late Jurassic and peaked during the late Cretaceous. Their significant morphological diversity has been increasingly understood through discoveries in Eastern Asia. These dinosaurs are unique among non-avian theropods for their race second pedal digit and large raptorial claws, both features crucial for identifying their tracks. Found globally, Deinonychosaur tracks are often suggested social behavior. One notable site in Fujian Longyan, China, discovered in 2020, contains layers of such tracks contributing further to our understanding of these animals. As for the actual discovery, what included two types of tracks. The smaller, measuring 11 centimeters long, was identified as part of the Ichno genus Velociraptor Ichnus. The larger, measuring 36 centimeters long, was identified as part of the new Ichno taxa of Troodontid known as Fujianopus yingliangi. You honestly don't want to know how many takes that took me to get right, but hey, I'm glad we got the pronunciation out of the way. An ichnotaxon refers to the classification or naming of a trace fossil based on its distinct characteristics. These ichnotaxa represent geological records of biological activity, capturing not the physical remains of the organism itself, but rather the impressions or marks they left behind. These include a variety of traces such as footprints, burrows, feeding marks, and more. Fujianopus is classified as a troodontid rather than a dromaeosaurid based on distinct features in his footprints, such as the reduced form of digit 4 relative to digit 3 and a slender foot structure typical of troodontids. These characteristics, along with the elongated and gracile nature of the limb elements suggested by the trackways, align more closely with troodontid morphology than with the robust toes and pronounced sickle claw typical of dromaeosaurids. So, let's be honest, a lot of you would have clicked on this video because you wanted to know the size of this giant troodontid, so I'll get into that. And an added bonus for you all is that these researchers even went on to calculate the dinosaur's walking speed, which hey, I think is a pretty good bonus on top of its size. Within the article, researchers note that there was a number of ways to measure both dinosaur speed and size based on the trackway. This goes all the way back to 1976, with RM Alexander originally developing a formula that calculated dinosaur speeds from their trackways by looking at the ratios between the length of their footprints and from their hip. Yet as with contemporary time, contemporary techniques are always on the rise, with more refined calculations to fit different types of dinosaurs. For example, the team of researchers utilized Suzuki's ratios which specified Deinonychosaurs which included the likes of Dromaeosaurids and Troodontids to get an estimate for this new dinosaur. This group came up with a specific ratio for each type, finding that Dromaeosaurids had a ratio of 4.32 and Troodontids had a ratio of 5.47. The smaller tracks of Velociraptorcus suggested that that dinosaur had a hip height of around 47 centimeters, which certainly isn't large. Large. On the other hand, the larger tracks from Fujianipus indicated a hip height of around 197 centimeters. That's right, this thing's hip height, not head height, could have reached 2 meters. That is arguably taller than your typical person. Also, estimating body size based on the relationship between foot length and total body length suggested that the track maker of Fujianipus could have been a whopping 5 meters long. Now, that is absolutely gigantic. I think we can all agree on that. If it did really reach these lengths and heights, it would be matching, if not surpassing, Utahraptor in size. This would easily make it the largest troodontid to date, even surpassing Steniochosaurus. If you're a big fan of this group, you might be asking what about Latinovanatrix? However, it turns out that this species was likely invalid, instead just being the remains of Steniochosaurus. So yeah, a lot of these troodontids have had it a bit rough this year, with many of them becoming invalid. However, it's important to state that the researchers themselves noted that the size estimates for our giant may have been a bit exaggerated. This is because calculations were based on smaller troodontids and leg length doesn't proportionally increase in larger theropods. Like many large extinct animals, this raises concerns about the accuracy and reliability of such sizes. As for weight, well, we can't really say for sure. This is due to it not being part of the journal article, especially because you'd be hard pressed to calculate on a dinosaur's weight just based off its footprint. So let's be realistic, we would need some sort of fossil remains to to know exactly what type of build this troodontid had. Maybe it was more bulky like the Utahraptor, however it could have had a more sleeker build. In my opinion, it would have likely had a more bulky if not middle ground build, why else would a Deinonychosaur be needing
needing to reach such sizes, 5 meters in length and 1.8 meters in height, if it was just going to be lightweight. The basis of this model seems to be too large for it to have a light build. It was likely growing these sizes to hunt larger prey items and hence it would have had to be more robust. Moving on to speed, the team also worked to figure out the movement speeds of both discovered trackways. The trackways discovered at the site reflected that the two dinosaurs were more than likely moving at slow speeds, with the article itself suggesting that they were either walking or trotting. The team utilized Alexander's formula to get an idea of their speeds. They estimated speeds of around 7.74 kilometers for Velociraptorcus and 7.34 kilometers an hour for Fugianippus. These slower speeds are actually common in theropods as a whole, which in turn implies that theropods likely conserve their energy when moving around, not engaging in rapid sprints unless it was for a clear purpose, whether that be for hunting or running away from a threat. Another reason why these dinosaurs may have moved at slower speeds is because they had to move cautiously. This would occur if the environment itself was especially challenging. So this means we know at a minimum our giant troodontid moved at around 7.34 kilometers an hour. Again, the same with weight, we don't know what its top speed would clock out at. Yet being that it wasn't the largest theropod around, I think it could have reached similar speeds to other large dromaeosaurids such as Ostraptor or Utahraptor. Even though Fujianipus's tracks were deeper than those of dromaeosaurids, they still had a similar step to maximum footprint length ratio, indicating similar movement patterns despite the differences in track depth. Well, as for its paleo environment and potential prey options, we're not too sure. But Dononicosaurs have been discovered to have a large variety in gigantism. This is seen in others such as Utahraptor, Ostraptor, and Achillobator. This gigantism suggests that they evolved to become more efficient hunters, especially against larger prey options. In the ecosystems of early Cretaceous Asia, where Fugianippus lived, this dinosaur seems to have shared its habitat with decently sized iguanodons and your classic small ornithopods. There would have also been a number of theropods that it would have coexisted with, ranging in size. The article itself details that around this time, there was almost a race between the Deinonychosaur and Tyrannosaurid groups, as they were growing larger and larger to assert themselves as the apex predators in the ecosystem. What I find most interesting about this is that the researchers suggest that this shift in size may have been a response due to an ecological gap left by the declining numbers of Allosaurids. Allosaurids, if you didn't know, actually dominated the planet in the Jurassic. Though, as we're wrapping this up, it is important to know a bit of debate that's left in the article. Within the paper, the researchers suggest that Achilla Beta, found in the same time period and a possible geographical range from Mongolia to southeastern China, could be responsible for leaving the large tracks at the Long Seeing site identified as Fujianippus. However, the physical traits of Achilla Beta align it with Eudromiosauria, noted for elongated tail features, whereas the shorter fourth digit of Fujianippus tracks suggest it was actually a troodontid and not part of this group. So it seems that we'll have to wait for further discoveries before confirming if Fugianippus was indeed a giant troodon or rather another known giant theropod such as Achillobator. And with that, we've reached the end of the video and I hope you all enjoyed. I'm sure you as much as myself enjoy a classic dinosaur discovery, especially when it's about a new giant. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and make sure to comment below what you'd like to see next. I'll catch you all in the next video. See ya.